Hello, this is Ms. Sharon again, and I want to welcome you back to our Sunday School time together. Always remember that God is with you and that your church family loves you. I have something exciting to tell you. This is the last lesson that we are going to record. We are going to come back to Sunday School and have Sunday School in our classes. Is that not exciting? Next Sunday, we'll actually see each other in person. Praise be to God. So this will be the first time I wrote this down. This is the first time we will be back in Sunday school since March the 8th, 2020. It's been a long time. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. And because we are so excited about it, let's sing our Alleluia song, Praise Ye the Lord. And let's stand up on Praise Ye the Lord and see if old Miss Sharon can still do it. You ready? Okay, let's do it. Allu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Allu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord. And we are have so many things to praise the Lord for our good homes, our families, our church, and the fact that Jesus is alive. And we're going to get to come back to Sunday school in our church building. Praise ye the Lord. Now, let's write, light our Christ candle to remember that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us right now while we're doing this lesson and with us at all times. God's with me while I'm recording it, and God's with you while you're listening to it, no matter when that may be. You don't have to listen to this on a Sunday. You can listen to it on Wednesday in the middle of the week, whenever you would like. I also want to say happy first Sunday of Ordinary Time for 2021. Yes, we are back in Ordinary Time, or almost, but Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and lives forever. Now together let's say, Christ is risen indeed. Together, Christ is risen indeed. We rejoice that Jesus Christ is risen. All, Christ is risen indeed. Come Jesus and guide our learning. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Now let's look at our church calendar. We've been through the Easter season. The 50 days of Easter are over. Let me move this out of the way so you can see this a little bit. So we're finished with the Easter season. Last Sunday we talked about Ascension Sunday. Uh, and Miss Jane, well not the last Sunday, Miss Jane did Pentecost last Sunday. Well we have done Ascension Sunday, Ascension of the Lord Sunday. We have had Pentecost, which is what Miss Jane told you about last Sunday. What were we celebrating on Pentecost? We're celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit, because we know God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now today, it says Trinity Sunday. This is a day that we do particularly remember, just like we did last week, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Now, how can we remember that? How can we remember about Trinity Sunday? We can remember about the Holy Spirit coming, and lots of times we, do, we remember about ascension, we think about Jesus ascending into heaven. Sometimes we have balloons for that. We have these red balloons for Pentecost to remind us of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, what could we make today that could remind us of Trinity Sunday? Well, of course, we could always use our trusty pretzels. Here's the pretzels. You remember pretzels were originally made to be praying arms. You know, people prayed. They didn't necessarily fold their hands the way we do. You know, today we, would, we pray like this or like this or just like this. But there was a time when most people crossed their arms and prayed. And these were like the praying arms. And you would pray with your arms. And what this also did, so this is the pretzel, so like the praying arms, because how the way these come up, and they represent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what would be something that we could do to help celebrate Trinity Sunday? 
Well, why don't we make a pretzel? Now, it would be a good thing if maybe someday this week you could get some dough and maybe you and your family could make some pretzels. Or you could get some modeling clay or some Play-Doh and what I really like best, this is model dough. I think probably all of you, except maybe the very youngest, have done model dough with me in this class or on Wednesday night. So why don't we just, so why don't you get out some model dough. You can just pause the video if you would like and go find some Play-Doh or something that you could use to make a pretzel. So we can remember, you can keep it around this week and remember about Trinity Sunday, and more importantly, you can remember that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So here we just roll it up like this. I don't know if that's the right length or not, but it's going to be about, and I will adjust it as it goes. So can, you, can they see my dough down here, Mr. Josh? We focused on the dough. Mr. Josh is trying to be kind and focus on me, but right now we need to go with the dough. We take it, we pull this one across like this, then we pull this side across like this, and then you adjust it to make it look the way you want to. And as you see, here we have the pretzel. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then I'm gonna turn it up like this. There's the praying arms. And there we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you can today, try to do that, or someday this week, let's make a pretzel. Or maybe you will make one when you come back uh, to Sunday school, and we can talk about it more. So that's Trinity Sunday today, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But now let's go on with the rest of our lesson. I wonder if the Holy Spirit is going to be mentioned in the lesson today on Trinity Sunday. I, I think so. So listen and count how many times you hear the word Spirit or Holy Spirit. So count. Pay close attention. Our lesson today is from the book of John. Is that in the Old or New Testament? You know, that's in the New Testament. We'll talk about that for a long time. It's in the New Testament. And like we've we'll said for weeks, uh, it's one of the Gospels. We know the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And our lesson is from John, and that's in the first part of the New Testament in the Gospels. Now, who was John? Well, John was one of Jesus' disciples. He's sometimes called the disciple that Jesus loved. Now, Jesus loved all of his disciples, but it seems he may have had a special relationship with John. Who was John's brother? You remember when we sang, there were 12 disciples, Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother, John. So he had a brother named James. They were both fishermen, and Jesus called them to be his disciples. The particular story that we're going to hear from the Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, happened during Jesus' ministry. This is before Jesus was crucified and resurrection and the Holy Spirit came. This is during the time when he's talking, walking around, teaching. So this happened before he started, before Easter and all those things. It was during his ministry. And before we hear our Bible reading, let me ask you a question. What's a good way to get to know somebody? Well, you might go visit them, etc. But uh, you might want to ask them questions. Here's somebody, maybe you've just met them, and you ask, well, where are you from? And how long are you here? And where do you live? And would you like to go to our church? You know, you know there's all sorts of questions, and we can find out things about people by asking questions. Uh, it was interesting the things you can find out when you're asking questions. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who worked for me when she was a very young woman in college, uh, when I was at the university, she worked in my lab, and she since graduated, moved away, had children. Uh, but she was calling me, and she was talking, or she sent me a text, I think, and we talked about this, is uh, she said, I've met a friend of yours, Loretta, is living in Florida. And I said, Loretta? Loretta Fisher? And she said, well, I think that used to be her name. Well, Loretta was someone that I had known when I was a girl. She was one of my best friends in high school. She moved away, and I have not seen her since. Uh, but as it turns out, she is living close to where Lisa's mother lives and is a friend of Lisa's mother in Florida, and they happened to be talking, 
And Lisa happened to mention that she had lived in Tennessee and somehow someone mentioned the word Sharon and it turns out by asking all these questions, she found one of my long lost friends. So we get to know people by, by asking questions, by talking to them, being friends with them. Well, the person asking questions that we're talking about, our story is about a conversation that happened between Jesus and another man. And the person asking questions came to visit Jesus at night. I wonder why he came at night. Well, let's listen and find out. Remember, you're listening for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and you're listening to find why did he come to see Jesus at night. The reading is from John, as we said, the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. I'm reading a paraphrase of the story that was included in our lesson. That hopefully will help us understand it a little better. Hear the word of the Lord. Nicodemus, a Jewish leader and a Pharisee, carefully walked along the streets. The moon was bright, but the shadows of the buildings made walking difficult. He didn't want anyone to see him. You see, Nicodemus was on his way to see Jesus. Some of his friends, other Jewish leaders, didn't like what Jesus taught. But Nicodemus had some questions to discuss with Jesus. That's what Pharisees did. They asked questions of each other. They learned and understood more by asking questions. That's not a bad idea. Nicodemus had some questions for Jesus. Finally, he and Jesus sat down to talk. Rabbi, which means teacher, Nicodemus said, we know that you are a teacher of God's word. No one does what you do, and no one teaches like you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus had probably heard about or maybe even seen some of the miracles that Jesus done had done. Maybe he knew that he had once turned water into wine. Maybe he knew he had once brought a person back from the dead. Maybe he knew he had made a person walk who couldn't walk. Maybe he had heard all those things. So he said, no one does what you do, and no one teaches like you do, unless God is with them. Before Nicodemus could ask Jesus a question, Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. What did that mean? Nicodemus forgot about his questions and asked Jesus, How can a grown person be born again? You can't be a tiny baby again. Nicodemus said, If a man is already old, how can he be born again? He cannot enter his mother's body again, so how can he be born a second time? Nicodemus is a little confused about this. Jesus answered, A person's body is born from his human parents, but a person's spiritual life is born from the Spirit. Unless a person is born of water and of the Spirit, that person will not enter God's kingdom. And God's Spirit blows wherever it wants to blow. You hear it, but you can't see it. You don't know where the Spirit blows or when it blows. Now, Nicodemus was really confused. I don't get it, he said. Jesus teased him a little bit and said, You, a Jewish leader and a Pharisee, you don't understand me? Well, here's the important thing that you need to remember and understand. God loved this world so much that God sent God's only Son that everyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. God did not send His Son in the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. Nicodemus sat and thought about what Jesus said. He thought about it all the way home. This was more important than the questions he had wanted to ask but he still hoped that someday he could ask Jesus those questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's think about this story for a while. Who was Nicodemus? Well, Nicodemus was a Jewish leader, and he was a Pharisee, a very educated man, a very real respected man. He actually taught about God. He particularly told people to obey the laws. He was considered a smart man, a respected man. 
Now, when did Nicodemus come to see Jesus? What time of day was it? He came at night. Why do you think Nicodemus came at night? You think perhaps he didn't want the other Pharisees to know that he was uh, going to see Jesus? He didn't want, he was a little embarrassed that he was thinking maybe Jesus was somebody special. But he went at night. And what was the important teaching that Nicodemus heard from Jesus? Well, he heard several important things. He heard about the Holy Spirit, and he also heard one of our most important Bible verses, one that most of us know by memory. We can say it. That was John 3, 16, and also John 3, 17, when he said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. John 3.17, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through the son should, could be saved. You have a paper that I sent you that has... We're supposed to figure out what the words in this are. Why don't we do that together? And then you can do it if you may have already done it, and that's good. And then you can even do it again if you would like to. It says good minus O. Hmm. So if we marked out that O, O, that would be God. So, and now there's a heart. What would that heart stand for? God so heart that added D, hearted, that wouldn't be right. Oh, I bet it's love. God so loved, we put an L-O-V-E because the heart stands for love, and then we add that D, and it says God so loved the, now we know what that is, that's a globe. That's, so God so loved the world. God so loved the world, so what did God do because he loved the world? That he gave his only, oh, and what's that picture? What's that next picture? Can you show any of that on the screen, Mr. Josh? Can you get that picture on it? That looks like the sun, doesn't it? That's like the sun. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Well, that's an S-U-N son. But ah, we need an S-O-N son. Give his only son so that every plus, ah, there's the number one. Ah, I bet that means we're supposed to write O-N-E for one. So that every one, O-N-E. Now we've got God so loved the world that he gave his only son, spelled S-O-N, so that every one who believes in him won't, what? P-E plus Hmm, minus A-D. Well, I'm just going to write down here on the bottom of my page. What do you think that is? Well, I think it's a radish. Do you like radishes? I don't like radishes. I don't eat them. But let's write down radish. R-A-D-I-S-H. And I'm writing it down just here on the bottom of my paper so I can put it back up there in the uh, blank up here in a minute when I figure it out. So I have radish, and it says take off the A-D. So I'll mark out the A-D. So that gives me R-I-S-H. So it says P-E, and I'll write R-I-S-H. Oh, it's P-E-R-I-S-H. Perish. Won't perish. You know what perish means? Perish means just go away, be totally gone, perish, torn up, will not perish. Now, what's this next one? What is that? What is that? There's something on this little tray, on this little container, and they're cutting a piece of it off. Now, if I were drawing this, I would have cut it this way. It took me a while to figure out what that one was. But that's butter. That's butter in a butter dish, and they're cutting off a piece of butter. But I always cut off the butter like this, not across like that. But perhaps you all, all cut your butter that way. No. 
Uh, so, if we write the word butter, let's write it down here on the bottom. B-U-T-T-E-R. B-U-T-T-E-R, that's butter. And they say mark off the T-E-R. So we mark off the T-E-R. That means we would write the B-U-T-R. So that's the word but. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. Okay, now let's read that together. You read it with me. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. So there it is. I used to know a song, but I couldn't really, wasn't sure I could think of all the words today. So we'll have to think about that a later time. Now, is Nicodemus ever mentioned in the Bible again? Well, here's the picture of Nicodemus. I'm going to send one of these to you. So you, by the time you're hearing this lesson, you could probably color this if you wanted to. Here is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. And is this the sun or the moon? Well, that would be the moon, but because he came at night, I think because he didn't want other people to see him. Now, we don't really know exactly where Jesus was when he came to see him, but we do know he came to see him at night. Is he mentioned again in the New Testament? Well, the second time Nicodemus uh, is mentioned uh, is he's talking to the people in the Sanhedrin. They've sent somebody to go out. They want them... Uh, the temple guards go out and get Jesus and arrest him. And Nicodemus, but the temple guards come back and they didn't arrest him because they heard him talk and they thought, boy, this man says good things. Uh, but Nicodemus was there with them and he said, our law does not judge a man without hearing him. We can't judge him until we know what he's done. So Nicodemus does not want them to go arrest Jesus, and he takes up for Jesus. Jesus is not there. They didn't arrest him, and he's telling the other Pharisees, no, we don't, we don't really, we can't just arrest a man. We can't, we really don't need to arrest him. And they said, are you from Galilee too? Study the scriptures? You learn that no prophet comes from Galilee. Of course, that's not true. Jesus was a prophet, great prophet. In fact, he was the savior of the world. And then we see Nicodemus again in the Bible, mentioned after the crucifixion of Jesus. You know, Joseph of Arimathea, who was somebody else who was a fairly prominent person who had talked to Jesus, asked for the body of Jesus. And he got Jesus' body from the cross and put him and went and put Jesus in his own new tomb that had never been used. And Nicodemus was with him, and Nicodemus went out and got all the spices to put on Jesus' dead body. Just imagine how excited Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were when they learned that Jesus was alive. And I guess Nicodemus probably got to be buried in that not Nicodemus, Joseph Arimathea probably got to be buried in that tomb after all in several years later. So how do you think, how do you think Nicodemus felt when he heard that Jesus was alive? He had respected him, he had really probably loved him, but now he thought he was dead and that was all over, but now he's alive. Think of some words, draw some pictures that would symbolize how you think Nicodemus might have felt. He probably felt happy, but he also probably felt confused. I hope he was one of the people that was there at Pentecost and heard the disciples when the Holy Spirit came on them and told them that about Jesus being alive. I hope that he got to hear all of that. How do you feel when you remember that Jesus is alive? You know, it's pretty sad when we're here on Good Friday, it's sad to talk about, go through what Jesus had to go through, how they hurt him and actually even killed him and he died on a cross. But then it is so happy to remember that Jesus is alive. Let's remember what Jesus said. Let's remember those verses, John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He sent his son so the world could be forgiven, so we could be saved. That's good news. When we talk about the good news, that is good news. John 3, 16 and 17 is very good news. And we're supposed to go into the world and spread the good news. So how do we do that? How do we spread the good news to others? You remember when you were young, when you were little guys, we would sing, go into all the world, all the world, all the world, go into all the world and teach the good news. And we'd do this while you were going around in a circle and going around through, then we would catch somebody, we'd say, how can you spread the good news, spread the good news, spread the good news, how can you spread the good news, Johnny? And then Johnny would say something that he could do to be kind and loving and spread the good news. So you be thinking this week, and every time you can, you try to spread the good news. You be kind and loving like Jesus was. Think about those things. Help people that are having problems. Do all you can to help others. And if they say, why do you act this way? Why are you always so kind? Why don't you get mad and have a fit? You can say, well, because I love Jesus and I'm trying to act like Jesus. And then they might want you, they might want to know a little more about Jesus. But we do want to go into all the world and spread the good news. And how many times should we do it? If we tell a person once, is that enough? Should we give up and just not love them anymore? No, we have to keep loving them. We have to keep praying for them. Hopefully they'll keep loving and keep praying for us. So it's time for our prayer. I'm just looking around, see if there's anything I have on the table I forgot to tell you about, but I think we covered it all. It's time for our prayer. Do you remember the song, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me? Some of you might know it more than, more than others. Uh, so let's sing it at the end of our prayer. And we're going to pray with our arms folded like the pretzel prayer. Um, let me sing Spirit of the Living God in case you have forgotten it, and then we'll sing it together at the end of our prayer, or at the time I'll tell you when to sing it. We sing, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, Use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Now that we've gone through it twice, maybe we can remember it during our prayer. If not, just sing along. God knows what you're, God knows what you're thinking and what you're meaning. And while we pray, let's put our arms, let's pray with pretzel arms. Everybody, fix your arms like a pretzel. Do the pray, praying arms and bow your heads. Let's pray together. Loving God, we are happy to be called your children. Help us to live as your children this week. Open our eyes to see the blowing of your Spirit among us and through us. Now let's sing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, go into all the world and teach the good news remembering that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are always with you. Goodbye. Remember, I love you. Should have said